Hi, welcome to ATCM. Today we are going to discuss about a patient who presented to our emergency department with a history of bradycardia. Let's see how that case scenario will go. Uh, good morning, Dr. Binu. Mm. So now we have a patient here, a 67 year old male patient mm. who is a known case of chronic kidney disease. Mm. He's on maintenance hemodialysis mm. three times in a week. Missed his last two sessions of hemodialysis, mm. currently presenting with acute onset of central chest pain mm. associated with breathing difficulty. Mm. Kindly go okay. ahead. So since how much time is he having these symptoms? Like he uh, started having chest pain for about last two hours. Okay. For that he was apparently no asymptomatic. Yes. Okay. So committing okay. initial ten second assessment, he is conscious, oriented, he is able to talk in his own sensorium, and so I am coming going to the primary service. So how is the airway? His airway is clean. He can yeah. talk in okay. sentences, full okay. sentences. Uh, breathing, respiratory, and saturation. His saturation is uh, 92 percentage mm. on room air. He is mm. having mild tachypnea, mm. but not in respiratory distress. Mm. No auscultation, any crepitations or anything? His uh, bilateral lung areas, you are having crepitations in infraxillary and infrascapular areas. Okay. So we can just give him to open up slightly and start him on supplementary oxygenation. We can use a oxygen mask at 6 liters of O2, we can start on oxygenation. So coming to the circulatory part, uh, how is the blood heart rate and blood pressure? Okay. <coughs> on connection to the monitors, your uh, patient's heart rate is shown as 42 beats per minute mm. regular. Mm. And uh, his blood pressure is 80 over 50 millimeter of mercury. Okay. Uh, so we are having a low heart rate and a low blood pressure. So we can get uh, two large bore IV candles. You get an 18 gauge IV candles on both arms, secure, and also uh, starting on O2. So coming to the disability part, his sensorium is full intact. Right. Periphery is a house like it's cold or like warm, cold only. So we are having signs of shock also. Uh, exposure, uh, temperature is effibrite. Like temperature no is history of fever or anything like that. No history of fever. So after completing the primary survey, we have issues in two areas. One is in the breathing part and the circulatory part. He is having a slight hypoxemia which we started on supplementary oxygenation. And also in the circulatory part, he is having hypotension along with bradycardia. Yes. So, so far we have secured uh, two large bone IV access and we are, uh, since he is having a state of fluid overload, we better not to give too much of fluid. We can give a small fluid challenge of about 200 ml. We can give us NS bolus. And also mean Time, get an ECG, a totally proper totally ECG, and also connect him to the monitors for continuous SPO2 and cardiac monitoring, and also get a VBG because since he's a CKD patient, we had to think about other causes also, and so we can take that. Does he have any other history like any diabetes? Um, he is a chronic diabetic mm. and a hypertensive. Mm. He is on chronic medication. Mm. But Chandra gives history that he haven't missed any medicines. Okay. I know any history of any overdose also unlikely. No, uh, medicines are being given by the bystanders, it's not with the patient, so no uh, chance of any overdose. Okay, so on reassessment, now vitals are again reassessment. Uh -huh. On reassessment of primary survey, patient's uh, saturation has improved to 98 percentage on 5 litre oxygen. Hmm. Uh, tachypnea has reduced from 32 to 24 uh, breaths per minute, hmm. but patient's BP uh, right now is again 80 over 50 hmm. with a heart rate of 42. Mm. beats per minute. Yeah, the ECG. Mm. So ECG is showing a uh, white chromosome bradycardia with a rate of around 42. Okay. Okay. With some tall T waves also. Okay. Okay. So concerning the current condition, he is in an unstable bradycardia. Because, Correct. Uh, concerning the conditions, one is he is having ongoing chest pain, he is in a hypertensive state, he is having signs of shock. Yes. His sensor is intact, but he is also having a state of fluid overload also. Yes. So, so that's why five, four points out of five, he is in unstable bradycardia. Correct. So we are going with uh, atropin. Atropin we can give 1 mg, uh, as an IV bolus we can give and see the response. Okay. Along with that we can uh, wait for the VBG to see like uh, any hyperkalemia or anything which we have to roll out. Correct. Is showing some things, so we have to arrange for the medications also. Okay. So we are giving atropin 1 milligram. Okay. So any response with that? There is no response with the atropin stat dose. Okay. So we can give two more doses of again 1 mg after every day, 3 to 5 minutes and again reassess for okay. any response. Okay. So three doses have been given. So there is no response. No response. So basically, this is a refractory bradycardia and not responding to atropin. We have to think about uh, the next step of management. It could either be a medical pacing or a uh, transcutaneous or transvenous pacing. So as I will look in the department, uh, we can arrange for 
uh, transcutaneous spacing if available or as an immediate method we can go for uh, either dopamine or adrenaline uh, this infusion we can start. Can you tell me what is the dose of dopamine you need to start on this patient? Yeah, suppose we are starting dopamine we can start with 5 to 20 microgram per kilogram per minute dosage. Okay. We can and write it according to the response and if it is adrenaline we can start with 2 to 10 microgram per minute infusion. Yes, per minute infusion. Hmm. Okay. Uh, along either one of these hmm. medications is okay, right? In hmm. the meantime, what else can you arrange? Uh, the thing is actually, uh, this patient is in an actually unstable condition. He can any time go bad. So we have to explain to the patient as well as if he's okay and sensory is intact. And also the vice chair is about any high risk of like any time he uh, imminent crash, we have to expect in this patient. Okay. So any time during a resuscitation procedures, he can go bad, which we have to explain to the vice and also take an informed consent for a rapid sequence intubation. Suppose the patient goes in the KG, so circulatory or uh, pulmonary phase. Correct. So we have to anticipate uh, acute <coughs> cardiopulmonary failure. We have to anticipate and also arrange for crash cart and all the emergency medications and equipment should be arranged. And along with that, we have to think about other causes which may have causes condition. One yes. is we have to rule out acute MI Correct. and also any electrolyte in a rearrangement. Also, because it's a non case of CED and multiple drugs, any drug overdose, like any beta blocker overdose. Correct. Uh, these things we have to also parallelly assess and uh, by history and other these things we have to rule out also. Okay. So suppose the patient is having uh, hyperkalemia, we have to start anti-hyperkalemia measures also immediately as possible uh, along with this management. Correct. So, so far we have given three doses of atropine, we have started him on dopamine infusion. Meantime, the patient if he is still in a bradycardia or in a, this seems we have to inform our cardiology colleagues, he might require a transparent spacing as a, like a final treatment and maybe in a pacemaker or implantation. Correct. And also, in mean, if the our uh, ED have the facility of transcutaneous pacing, along with the uh, starting medication, we can start, start place the pacing pads also. Uh, suppose the patient is not responding to the medical management, we can start uh, start with uh, transcutaneous pacing, which can buy some more time until the definitive treatments are arranged. Okay. So, so far we have an unstable bradycardia patient. Uh, we initially had some desaturation along with pulmonary failure. Uh, this thing also shock also. So we started him on oxygen supplementation. Uh, we, and because of unstable bradycardia, we uh, give atropine maximum dose given. Dopamine infusion was started, which she was maintaining. But we arranged for transparent spacing also. And now he is being stabilized. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you.